with the story. Y'all may or may not want to hear this. But as we, as I started, we moved over here uh, to Mississippi and, and started with Mississippi State University, I have two kids. Uh, they're currently six and seven. And, and you know, when we first got started, I, I have a, my, my oldest, my son, had stayed home with my wife the entire time growing up um, until he started school. So every day he's, he's with home with mom. And so we're and he's really a, a mama's boy, and, and he loved being home, didn't like to, to go out too much. And so we're real worried uh, going into not only a new place, but a new school and starting school for the first time. And so we were just working. We're going to wake up on this date, countdown, one, one month. We're going to wake up, and you're going to go to school. Wake up, and we're like, all right, you know, three weeks, countdown. You're going to wake up. You're going to go to school. It's going to be fun. There's going to be new kids there. You're going to have a teacher just really getting into the fine details of him prepping him to get to go to school. Um, and then we kept counting down, all right, one week for school. And he, I mean, he started getting real motivated into it. And, and he was excited. He's like, I can do this. I get up, I'm going to go to school. And then came the day, all right, today's the day. You're going to school. And for, for, for a son that's really shy and reserved and wanted to stay home with mom, he was ready for it. He goes to school. Good day, comes back, had a great day, loved, I loved school, it was awesome. So we go to bed, wake him up the next morning and say, all right, time to go to school. And he looked at me and said, I got to go again. <laughs> and we had prepped him so much for going to school, but never told him how long <laughs> he was going to have to go to school. Uh, and had a, had a sad conversation of, of how long school, how long you will be in school, um, and so it, it reminds me, especially, you know, row rice and try not to focus in on one particular area, in my case, irrigation, and, and not think about what's going on past that point or once we figure this out or working. And that just opens up this, one thing particular with, you know, irrigation. Um, I, I work across a lot of different commodities, um, rice being obviously one of them and, uh, and then cotton, corn, soybeans and Particularly in, the, in what I've seen so far with row rice is talking to collaborators in Arkansas, Louisiana to see what's what's going on because everything's a little bit differently, different. Working and talking with growers and I'm seeing what they're doing to not just try not to focus in on just this one problem on how we need to irrigate, but how does what is the disease, disease efficient, um, issues with that um, from from a, from a pest management standpoint or across. And our agronomist, I mean, there's just so, it's just such a broad um, area and, and a very new area that we're trying to work together. So I'm hoping to, to look past that first day of school and make sure that we, we have all the, the issues and we look past just one my irrigation focus on that. And I mentioned, so I, I'm also a part at the Delta Research and Extension Center. There's a national center for alluvial aquifer research. It's a, it's a center that's been developed within the last two years, about the time I started. That's a collaboration with USDA, ARS, and Mississippi State University housed there in Stoneville. And it's really looking at the overall aquifer um, decline that we have here in the lower Mississippi River Basin um, through water quality, water quantity, um, and, and across all commodities. And, and that's one issue as we start looking at rice irrigation, specifically in Arkansas and Mississippi, that's what's driving a lot of the data that we're trying to figure out is what, what does row rice uh, what does AWD, what does conventional levy, what does that mean for, for, to, for water use, water use efficiency, and then how that results into yield. And so this, you know, being in this area is, is different um, as as far as not that biggest with the declines, as you see where the, the focus is in Mississippi up in Arkansas. But the, the fact is within, within Mississippi specifically, there is um, increased permits or regulation that were capped within a certain uh, amount of acre inches. And so how does that look like and what, how much water are we applying based on these different practices? And so honing in on the irrigation and water application of row rice, what I feel like I've, what, we, what we think we know um, as we're going forward. And my first initial thought is we've got that, we got that first portion um, of the, the top end of the field. And so we do want to protect the yield on the top side of the field as it's our, our limiting um, from a water standpoint area. And then at the same time, we, we a lot of times is overlooked. There's the bottom side of the field where we're hurting ourselves 
Um, and, and specifically what I've seen over in Mississippi as well is stacking water too high on the bottom end where we're having deep water effects. And we have some data to show here's the middle of the field as we compare this is on an on farm and you can see that the top section if you divide it into thirds where we have our sweet spot there in the middle and then a, a little bit as well decline on the bottom uh, but focusing on that top part but not to not to forget about that bottom part to try to make the entire field that production system the most efficient as we can as i was working with farmers doing some on farm sites um, which limits the amount of ways we can add treatments to it, but really collecting a lot of data on what they're doing with row rice. In particular, this is, this is just a conventional rice growers, conventional levees uh, or, or cascade flooding. And, and we, we looked a lot of their data across multiple years, um, of multiple fields, and there is a yield drag on the bottom end of the field compared to the top. And so we want to make sure as we set this system up, Where's the prime area that total water depth that we need to be looking for as we as we work forward with it, whether type of irrigation strategy we're using with rice. And here's another paper that kind of shows the same thing. When we look at what ponding water depth and what that, and that that's going to look the same thing within a field as well. And so where we started on uh, trying to come up with a question that was asked of us is how do we initiate, how do we trigger irrigation in a row rice um, system? And through, through and this has been around for a long time and it's a, and it's a pretty um, cheap way to look at it, but these, what we're calling panty pipes or pipes, it's a four inch PVC with perforated holes. I don't know if you can see what's in, inside that pipe, perforated holes and looking at the water depth, whether it's water depth above uh, soil level. And then as it goes down, you can, it's gonna perforate inside that pipe and we can see the water depth going down into it. It's trying to come up with a way we can say this is where we're going to in, in, initiate irrigation, uh, specifically in a row rice field. We looked at AWD and row rice before we start seeing a yield hit due to that water level. And so here's some examples of, of some data that we saw on station with our rice yield by water depth. And so we looked at negative four inches in that panty pipe, letting it go down to four inches and then irrigating, negative eight, negative 12 and all the way down to negative 16. And you can see here's our continuous. So can, can, uh, maintaining a, a constant um, four inches above and then a soil surface at zero here and going across our rice yield. So here's where we, we grouped in where we saw no difference in yield, rice yield by water depth, continuous soil surface, and then even down bringing it, we can bring it down to that negative four and then we looked at our total water use. How much water are we using by bringing it down to that negative four, negative eight? And obviously you're using less water, um, but then compared to our continuous and even our soil surface, um, and you see a difference between our soil surface and our negative four here. So if you look at yield maintaining and, and um, holding on to that, that uh, rice yield by de water depth and our water use, we honed in on that negative four, not letting it go past that negative four if we're using that, what we're calling that panty pipe system. So here's an example, and um, there's a lot of different ways to use that, but, but also what I think is very helpful from a producer standpoint is visualizing what that looks like in that pipe versus what it looks like actually in that field. And so here's a plus four continuous flood. <clears throat> you can see the water standing there. And then here's the soil surface, what, what, what it looked like when it hit zero in that panty pipe system. And then here's our negative four. It's four inches below the soil surface. Um, it starts to get those little, little cracks, those hairline cracks within the system. And then that's, that's what that looks like on a, on a surface, uh, on, the, on the soil surface. So we, this is when we say we don't want it to get past that point to protect that, that yield standpoint. And here's some on-farm evaluations that we've done going on farm and letting them uh, irrigate the, through the, the row rice system, um, irrigation system and trying to collect data on what we've seen. And, and this is blocked up here at the bottom and you can see the difference. It's, it is creating those three main zones uh, where our, our, our top end of the field and our middle and then with our holding water there at the bottom. 
and they irrigated this um, separately a well. And this may have been caused by a piping or water not a uniform going across, but again, we did see that top end being hurt, middle, and down into the bottom. And you can see the averages for the two. So from a, it showed the yield drag on the top versus the bottom, and what we're trying to do, can we protect this top end and bring it up and irrigate it? And, and there's several ways that we're trying to see, hone in on what, what are some methods that we can look at. This was compared on farm to a side-by-side -side conventional system. Um, this is uh, adjacent fields. And so when you look at the total average, um, again, there's a lot of advantages um, to that. And I think the labor and the, the lack of levies and being, and being able to be, have uh, some, some flexibility going into it. And although we, we may see some issues on that top portion, um, a lot of times we're not seeing too far off from our total yield. Uh, even on, from an on-farm, uh, from an on-farm evaluation, we had we compared several sites. Um, I believe we had 19 total between alternate wetting and drying and a furrow irrigated. And 2017, 2018, we saw very close. And this is across multiple management sites, uh, multiple varieties, multiple fields, multiple slopes. Um, uh, and we averaged them out and then 2019 there was a big hit um, with that and I don't know if it was the 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 rainfall uh, that was difference in there but we saw a big drop off in, in, in 2019. You can see the total water use, water use efficiency, uh, furrow irrigated rice is is even compared to an alternate wetting and drying system it's it's a they're doing a good job of, on total from a total water use or water use efficiency standpoint. Um, using less water. So from a Mississippi State, um, and, and I know that we, you even mentioned that some are holding water back, some are le um, letting it go and not blocking it at the bottom. Um, one thing I would um, I would recommend is if you're holding that or blocking that water to not uh, to try to stay around that six inches and to not stack that water too deep. Um, you know, I'm hearing and talking to a lot of uh, farmers that are stacking and holding that water too high. And, and we're, when we're looking and it gets a lot of the tension on the top end of the field as far as the yield drag, but we can hurt it again on the bottom as well. Initiate irrigation before the water level reaches that four inch threshold um, is, is so far as what we've seen from a, from a small plot on station irrigation standpoint. Um, below the soil surface utilizing that panty pipe, um, you can look at so what we're starting here is this is a panty pipe with an um, on a, this is particular this is Precision King uh, rice uh, soil moisture sensor, but they you can have a sonic uh, reader on top that you don't have to go out into the field and be able to to look down into that pipe. There's a lot of options, e even looking at the comparing to the what the soil surface looked like on those pictures that I said to initiate. But this has a sonic reader that will bounce off the top of those level and then get send it back to your phone, which will allow you to to not have to go out there and see it. You can see this uh, water level as it goes down and predict out even when it's going to hit that point. And then as you get into the irrigation uh, season and you get into a routine, it, it, you start to get feel and, and how often and how frequent you're going to irrigate. So here's a visual inspection. Um, it, um, you can use a soil moisture sensor, go and send it to your phone. And then irrigation, uh, just from the visual standpoint, from the uh, cracks begin um, on what that equates to when we're talking about four inches below in that panty pipe system. Things that we're looking at going forward, if, if we, we're trying to establish an initiation um, trigger standpoint from, from soil moisture sensors, um, some of the questions trying to reduce the, the, the loss and bring in the, the yield gap on the top portion of that field is more frequent irrigation, maintaining that saturation. Can we, can we push water across it more frequently, more or less some pulses going across? And so one, one idea to, to not have to be able to go out there and um, look at that, that, that opens up that scenario is this, um, we're looking at is irrigation automation. And so whether that's alternate wetting and drying, row rice, we can open and control valves um, through the control of our phones 
utilizing this precision king soil moisture sensor system where we can communicate and if we if we can hone in on a schedule or a, a pinpoint of saying this is when we need to start we can start that um, irrigation system where it's all connected through that system as we go and so so looking at maybe a more frequent irrigations going across that field how long can we stretch it um, and then obviously the the uh, nitrogen application um, combination with those irrigation applications and seeing what what works best um, from the row rise standpoint and so um, that here's my contact information I look forward to to listening to the producer panel to, to working with other um, researchers and, and university systems as we're as I feel like I'm trying to to listen and, and catch up as much as I can and may on may work best um, and and hopefully as we go forward with this that we can hone in on what a row rice production system sta uh, standpoint looks like and 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 beyond just the irrigation application but the entire production system with that I'll uh, answer if we have any time for for questions. Thank you.